Hello, hello. How is everybody this morning? Does everyone have coffee and orange juice? <laughs> Welcome. For those of you who are just joining us this morning, a quick little housekeeping detail. Um, for your parking, make sure that you go to the registration desk to get your validation later um, because you will get a discount on that. It'll be $7 for parking. Um, if you uh, use Twitter, then make sure you're following at Witty on Twitter and use the hashtag Witty Summit. Although I will say that for um, this, for the World Cafe coming up, please keep your laptops closed and don't use your phones until the breaks. There will be specific breaks um, for tweeting and whatnot. Um, but just a little housekeeping detail. Uh, we have a great, great day of presentations today, packed with some wonderful content for all of you. Many of you are the presenters, so congratulations to all of you. <laughs> but without further ado, I would like to get up here on stage our wonderful, witty founder and chairwoman, Carolyn Layton. She is a great, great proponent of women, particularly women in technology, obviously, uh, started this organization 22 years ago, and just recently this year was named by Fast Company Magazine as one of the women leaders in technology. So get on up here, Carolyn. Good morning, everyone. Is it live? Can everyone hear me? Am I loud enough, Adam? So, first of all, welcome. I am so happy to see all these wonderful, smart, talented women here. The energy is just amazing. And I am really energy sensitive. When I was a child, I actually thought something was wrong with me because people would, certain people would walk by me and I would get this wave of information. And I had no idea what was happening and it scared the heck out of me. Now I try to recognize it, and there are some, some energy I have to walk away from. I'm sure you have similar experiences. <laughs> and other energy I always walk towards, so that's one of the many mysteries of life. <laughs> so my goal this morning is to really get you to use this opportunity at the conference to do things a little differently. We're here to really help you make a shift and think about yourself and your possibilities in very new ways. And there are several things you can do to help you make that happen. It's really hard to shift habits. I work on my habits every day, but I'm always trying to move in new directions. Even at 70 years old, I'm always trying to transform and improve. So one, one of the exercises you might try is, if you're usually the talker at the table, try to just assume a different role and try to really practice listening. If you're normally quiet and normally listen, try to be more engaged, more active, and for all of us to be fully present and engaged in being here, no matter what's going on out there, so you can really get the most out of your two days of amazing experiences. If you're sitting with people you know, please, I encourage you to move to sitting with people you don't know. Try to experience being uncomfortable because it's through that slight discomfort, in my experience, that wonderful things occur and change happens. This morning, I had asked, how many of you have been to prior World Cafes for Witty? OK, this is going to be a great experience. And today's World Cafe is a little bit different. I asked Dr. Adams to do a, an exercise that I developed a few years ago called Creative Exchange. And I developed this process because I found when I was talking to my colleagues in business that w one of us would be talking, dominating the conversation. I'd hang up. There were no solutions, no action items, and it was just too frustrating. I couldn't deal with it. I love solutions and action items going forward. So I thought, OK, I'm going to develop a process, which, by the way, I recommend you consider in some of your 
conversations when you set up calls, where we each take, if we have an hour for the call, we each take 30 minutes. If we have 30 minutes, we each take 15. We each select an issue that we're struggling with, a decision we're trying to make that we need feedback on. And when it's your turn, you do the talking, you present the issue, some of the trade-offs you've considered, I listen. And then it's my turn. I choose the issue I'm struggling with talk about the trade-offs I've considered, some of the factors that need to be considered in my decision, and you listen. And then each of us gives some new possibilities that might address your issue. You give me some possibilities that I may not have considered. And I found once I began that several years ago, my time and my conversations we're so much more effective and rich, and that's what we're going to do this morning in the World Cafe because we all have issues and decisions we have to make. Some of them come at us <laughs> every second, but some of them are smaller, some of them are bigger, but in keeping with Witty's philosophy that we are all here to collaborate, to support each other, that life only works when you win and I win together. It's not about you taking more and it's not about me taking more because that never works. So Dr. Adams is going to lead us in the, in the World's Cafe Creative Exchange Sessions. And I'd like to introduce Dr. Adams who is a world leader in Cafe, she, World Cafe, she is an expert. We are so fortunate to have Anne back for, is it the third year, Anne, of leading our World Cafes. She travels all around the world working with Fortune 50 companies. She teaches us skills that we leave with that are invaluable, that can help us create a shift, look at ourselves in very different ways, which should be a daily exercise for all of us. And Anne is currently educating global corporate executives and their teams in the essentials of organization transformation, which is her passion, to empower them in creating their future. And Anne, I've never asked you this, but I'd really like to know, since you are working with executives and transforming their organizations, how the gender discussion and issue plays out when you come up. I'd really love you to address that because that was a very big topic at our board meeting last night. Mm -hmm. And that is, how can we get the men running corporate America to understand that not only do we contribute as women, but we are a huge power source for business. And until they understand that, will never be taken seriously. So we have to do that in a collective way. And Anne, I'd love to hear your comments on that. So please welcome Dr. Ann Adams. Good morning. We did ask, and I'm just gonna ask it again too, and I know that there is a huge Twitter crowd here and lots of social media. And what we're gonna do is break up this particular time between now and 10 o'clock. So there will be actual specific sessions called Twitter time. So we'll stop and you'll have experienced certain kinds of things and then you'll have a chance to Twitter. So if that would work for you all, and the same with computers, if you would put your computers aside. And again, why we're sitting in this particular way is so you have an opportunity to really get to know and to have some particular kinds of conversations with the people at your tables. So that's an invitation. I'm going to answer uh, Carolyn's question. And uh, I laughed when you said this question because what I was saying to myself, well, if you have two days, I'll really answer that really well because what you are really addressing is a lot of what I do. And it has to do with, if you look at history, you know, in terms of men and women and how they've interacted forever and ever, and then people create identities. 
and they have an identification. So you and I know that over history there's been these identifications. And it does take something. So a lot of my work in corporations, and I work in schools also, is for people to get very clear about where our identities come from, how they got put together, and then transformation for me is all about re-identifying, reinventing an identity. So those are the kind of conversations that I have in corporations with men and women. So a lot of the people that I work with, they're very engaged in how do they include. And to me, these tables are another example, is that you want to begin to have very different kinds of conversations in corporations and in education, meaning that men need to be able to really hear what's being said by women, and women need to be able to hear deeply like what's being said by men, as an example that you asked. So for me, it's, it's really creating an environment in which you and I can have very different kinds of conversations. That we can have what I call a safe environment to be in. And that's one of the reasons why I invite Carolyn in the, in the conference to have you all set up in this particular way. So that you have more and more of a sense of a safe environment for you to be in during this conference. So you can really fully express yourself and that you do have an opportunity to, to be really heard and to be listened to by other people. And there are some men in the room too, so you'll have some men here, but mostly by other women. So I wanted just to walk through a little bit, and I also was chuckling when I brought this flip chart over, because in the, <laughs> the world of technology, you know, this thing is like a, a dinosaur, right? It's like, oh, uh, she's got a flip chart, oh my god. <laughs> But there are just a few things that I think would be really good to put up here, so. That yeah, was funny. I know I'm a little older person, too, but I do, I do Twitter sometimes, and I do all those things. <laughs> I just wanted to run through quickly what it's going to look like here now. So it's now about 8.20. We have till 10 o'clock. And we're going to do a series of different kinds of interactions and conversations with each other. And you'll have time to get to know. So one of the things we're going to look at is creating this safe environment. So one of the first areas that I'm going to have you look at with me is, and I want to hear from all of you, how many of you have heard this before? This is called appreciative. And I get close to the board. I don't always spell correctly, by the way, because it looks very different close up here. But how many of you have heard of appreciative inquiry, by the way? If you were here last year, you might have heard of it. This is something I'm going to write down here, too. The, the gentleman that put this together is Cooper Ryder. He's from Case Western Reserve. He's been doing it for many, many years. And the idea about the appreciative inquiry is not only about an interview, so you have a chance to be with another person here in a moment, to do a very short one. Usually they're quite long, and people get a chance to really get to know, you know what values people have, what excites them in life, you know, what their passions are. Today we're just going to do a very mini kind of a thing just to give you a sense of what it is. But for me, appreciative inquiry also is what I call a context. So it's not just an interview, but it is a context. And what does that mean? Well, what we want to do is to begin to create something where, and I'm going to ask the question of you, when's the last time that you have an experience of being deeply appreciated? So just notice like where you were or who you were with, what were the circumstances. Just recall the last time you had an experience of being deeply appreciated. And then just look and notice our news and notice the, the, the papers that we read, the magazines that we read, you know, the television programs, you know, what kinds of things are coming into our ears every single day. And then you ask yourself the question, in this world that you and I live in, you know, in the company that you go to work with every day, how much do you have a sense of appreciation being part of the culture? So appreciative inquiry as a context is really begin to look at day after day after day how much of that is in your life and in your company's life. What I've noticed over the many years, I've been working in corporations now for about 25 years, and what I've noticed is the more this becomes apparent and the more that people have a sense of giving and receiving appreciation, then more and more people are stepping forward to be much more responsible for the company or much more responsible for the organization. So when I feel known 
and I feel appreciated, somehow or other I do then step into a very, very different place. The same thing with inquiry, by the way. Just ask yourself the question when you're in your organizations, you know, on your teams, how much of the experience of inquiring is available? You know, for most of the companies that I go to, you know, the people are absolutely, they're, they're brought into the company because they're very smart, because they're very experienced. But there's a lot of knowing. And knowing's great, by the way, so please don't get me wrong. I think knowing is great. But to begin to know, there's a distinction when you're actually having conversations and you're inventing, the, the distinction between I know, I know, I know, and oh, well, that's interesting, or I'm wondering, or I'm curious, or, you know, there's a very, very different mood that gets created. So I just wanted to set this up just for, so you see that um, I'm going to ask you just in a moment to find somebody that, you're, that you don't know very well, and we're going to just do it with two people. And this is the precursor, so we're going to have this particular exercise so you have a chance to get an experience of what it's like. And then we're going to move into the creative exchange that Carolyn spoke about. But for me, a lot of my work is about creating moods. You know, what's the mood with which you and I work? What's the mood with which we move in our lives? And to begin to know that you and I have a great deal to say about creating the mood that we're in. So that's why I set this particular piece up. And I'm just going to go through this really quickly so you can see it. I think I am. <laughs> OK. There. This is just really quick so you can just see it. Appreciative, the valuing, the act of recognizing the best in people. And certainly that's the best in ourselves. You know, affirming past and present strengths. To perceive those things in life. So I didn't need to go through all of it, but I just want to get a, a mood for the fact that appreciation, when you're in, engaging with this other person in a moment, could you be there just noticing that you could appreciate what they're saying in response to the questions? Can you listen in a way where they really do begin to get into what it is about life that they really get excited about or they get passionate about? The next one is about inquiry. Again, it's the act of exploration and discovery. It's about wondering. If you look at young children, you know, five, six, seven, in that neighborhood in there, you notice there's a lot of wonder, a lot of questions too, but you know, they're really curious and they're wondering. And then you look and see as we get older and older and older where that wonder's gone, you know. So just a, an opportunity for you to practice a little bit here. So what we're going to do is to set you up in a way so it could be somebody right at your table or you might find that there was somebody that you met before that you'd like to do this exercise with. But it's an exercise that's going to be, each person's going to have 10 minutes. So you're just going to begin to go back and forth with the questions and I'll put them right up in front of you. Oh. I just put this quote here right here too. So when you listen generously to people, they can hear the truth in themselves often for the first time. Really like that quote. So we're going to set up the questions here. So what brings you the most aliveness, satisfaction, and engagement in your work? What brings you the most aliveness, satisfaction, and engagement in your work? And then these are just different questions you may consider. You don't have to ask all of them of each other, but it might be what makes, what stands out for you, what makes it an exciting experience, who are the most significant others involved, why are they significant, what is it about you that makes it alive and engaging, and what key insights do you learn from your aliveness, satisfaction, and engagement? So again, these are just leading questions. There might be others. But what I'd like you to do now is to find somebody that you'd like to do this exercise with, and you'll choose who wants to go first. And then again, person listening, please just listen. If you have questions that you need clarification for, fine. But it really is about that one person having 10 minutes to talk in response to these different questions. Thank you. We just have a time for maybe one or two, but I just wanted to see if anybody at the tables wanted to say anything to the whole group about what that experience was like for you. What kind of mood were you left in? What were the feelings? Anybody want to share with the whole group? I know it's a whole other ball game if you do that, but <laughs> anybody? 
Over there. Great, thank you. Someone's going to bring you a mic, too, so would you mind standing up? I think there's going to bring you a mic. Here, here he comes. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> you get, well, you see, you get used to it, then you can kind of look around and see what it's really like. <laughs> thank you very much. What was that like for you? Oh, it was wonderful, I thought. Um, because uh, I think at the beginning, uh, with a person that you haven't met before, you have a little bit of a, a hesitation. And uh, I don't know, at least for me, I, I tend to be very uh, uh, conservative and, and kind of downplaying. Uh, but then I thought, you know, it feels comfortable. The questions are good. The, you set it up very nicely. Why not, you know, go with intent and, and start speaking uh, honestly and start speaking confidently? And uh, how would... You know, and then as I started, it sounded really good. And, and then yeah. I thought, I'm an interesting person. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and I believe that, um, that also uh, Pam, Pam uh, felt the same way. Because yeah, at the you. end, I, you know, we, uh, at least I thought, wow, this is really impressive what, she's a, you know, yes. what she has done and what she's going to do. And, yes. and, um, Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. That was great. Thank you. I'll, you got Tell me your name. Maria. Maria. Yeah. Thank you, Maria. So me, Maria is talking a lot about, because I do, as Carolyn said, I do this a lot in my engagements with organization transformation. So part of it, I'm going to leave you with this question, is just to begin to notice, what if you initiated a lot more of those conversations in your own life? Starting with your family, your spouse, your teenagers, you know, your elementary school students where well, you begin to really create an environment where you're listening and allowing them to speak in the way in which your partner did. What would happen if you did that often at work, particularly with functions or organizations that perhaps have a little bit of friction there? You begin to create a very, very different mood. So thank you for speaking out about all of that. Very good. So we're going to move on. We just have a, another series of exercises that we're going to look at now. And this is, Carolyn has invented this, and it's really an opportunity for the two of you. So there's two of you now. I know there's a few people that have joined, so you can just pair up with another person. We'd like to create groups of four. My invitation to you is to pick another dyad group that you don't know very well. And we're going to begin to take a look at these next questions. So I'm going to put them up for you so you can see them. These are opportunities to grow. So these are chances to get, and we really wanted to create a particular mood for you so that you can look at these and to take uh, opportunity to really see how could you have a very authentic conversation with the people in your group? So I'm going to read these over. And these aren't, you're not supposed to go through all of them. They're just there to support you. But given your current circumstances, what do you see or feel as an area that presents you with the most opportunity to grow right now? What is it about your current circumstance that is an opportunity to grow, develop, and explore, particularly with the support and guidance of committed partners? Who are the people around you that you want to include in this next phase of your life? People with whom you want to create something special and breakthrough. What is an area that you would love to engage with other people in exploring the opportunities to collaborate? If you could ask any questions of a group of colleagues for their support and expertise, what might you ask them? And what makes this time in your life so full of possibility? So the way we're going to work this is you're going to create a group of four. One person in the group will start, and they're going to have five minutes. And then I'll ring the little bell here. I forgot my bell, but that's my bell. And then you'll have a chance to listen, and then you're going to have the group giving you some feedback back. So they'll have 10 minutes to give you any kind of feedback in terms of the questions that you're going to have. And we're going to move around. So we have enough time for everybody in the group to have the five minutes and to have the 10 minutes to come back. And then we're going to be able to have a time in that period to Twitter, too. So I realize I want to make sure that I give you time to Twitter. Thank you. We just have a few more minutes. But I wanted to give people in the audience an opportunity just to look at anybody want to share what came out of that in your group with the whole group. As I walked around, I noticed there was a lot of really incredible interactions in those conversations. So just always nice to hear. 
it's just nice to hear from different people. So who would like to say a little bit about what that experience was like? Great, thank you. And your, the microphone's coming right behind you. If you want to stand up so people could see you, thank you. Thanks for standing up. So what that experience was like, that a creative exchange with your colleagues here? Oh, really? Oh, it's on. Hello? It's on. Okay. Can you hear me? <laughs> okay. So I think initially it was still that, that point of hesitation. And then um, once we started talking. Just a second. You all, could you? Can you just, guys hear yeah, me? Yeah, I just want to make sure they can all hear you. Thanks. Okay. So then it was in the five minutes, it was inquiry, trying to get to what the real, their real goal was and what they, how they really wanted to grow. And then it just became very energetic because everyone wanted to, um, you know, find a way to, to take that to the next level and to help that person actually, you know, have some good ideas to walk away with action items that they could actually grow. Yeah, great. Thank you very much. And yeah. I will say, just like um, last year, these these sessions start out very quiet, and then all of a sudden the room gets really loud because yes. no one's inhibited anymore. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, you just pointed to something about our culture. I think. I mean, not just our culture, like in general, in terms of America or China or whatever, but the culture in the world is well, hesitation. You know, I got to be careful. I don't know if I want you to know me. So again, the invitation out of what we're doing here, and a lot of my work is really about shifting that. You know, that's why we call it organization transformation, is to begin to have people being more and more connected with one another, more and more related. So thank you very much for saying that. Other people, anybody else would like to say anything before we move on? Yes, thank you very much. Right behind you, the microphone. Um, I'm Constance Jackson. You would think that um, in, an, in a setting like this that um, everything should be very positive and uplifting. And um, I'm going to try to say this without, you know, making any, any kind of um, innu No, you're self-expressing, right? That's what you're but, doing But um, right what was wonderful about listening to, to our group was um, the disclosure, the, the emotional disclosure of um, the workplace setting and how um, prejudices um, sometimes, um, and, and in this case oftentimes, prevailed just on a day-to-day -day basis. And that uh, it, it was very troubling um, to uh, listen to that as an independent entrepreneur, to listen what goes on in the workplace within the, within the corporate structure knowing that um, the inequities are so um, outrageous that uh, you wonder how can you really uh, change the cultural environment to improve um, cultural competence. Yeah, thank you very much for saying that. And that comes out of, what I would say, comes out of a safe environment to start having those conversations. So a lot of my work is about a difficult conversations. How do you begin to have them in a way where it's not about taking the finger always and going like that, but it's really about inquiring with a lot of appreciation, like how is it that you feel that way or why is it that that way? But I think that would be something too as an invitation to all of you, you know, to take the quality of stand that needs to be taken in any setting for that matter, to be able to stand up and say, this is how I feel about what's just happening here. And it does take something. But thank you very much for saying that. I appreciate that. Anyone else, like what that was like for you? How about as a receiver of it? You get a sense of being empowered as you walk out of here? It's something, I think, for a practice to begin to take a look to see how often do we really have those kind of conversations with each other. I saw a hand here. I just know that in case there's somebody else that may want to speak beforehand, but there's a shyness in the group, I think, right? Good, we'll take one more, and then we're going to move on. Great, thank you. Okay. Back over here. Well, what you shared earlier was just so really right on the line here. So she's coming right behind you with a microphone. Um, just uh, quickly that um, I felt empowered because uh, somebody pointed, uh, Maria, the other Maria pointed out that um, we hear ourselves giving advice that then we can uh, say, well, I haven't been doing that. And... <laughs> Uh, and then, so that comes back and, yes. and, and, and teaches me in a more meaningful way yes. what I need to do. And yes. also I felt very empowered uh, by the kind remarks of, of the people around me about what I was doing. And, yes. and that, you know, can't, you know, that, that's wonderful. 
Yep, thank you. I have to go back to this one slide that I had earlier because it was so, it's so perfect in the sense of, um, I've got to find out where it is now. Let's see, it goes this way. I mean, this is interesting, isn't it, about us listening, but it's also, I love what you just said about listening to yourself. So if you listen generously to yourself, then you can hear the truth for yourself often for the first time, too. That was great. Thank you very much. So we need to wind up here. I wanted to just give you a couple of slides here before we go on. So this is one that I use a lot, where I have particularly high-performing teams working with each other. They do exercises back and forth about being four. I wanted to leave you with this because I felt like there was a lot of starting with the appreciative inquiry and then moving into the creative exchange. At least a practice, beginning to practice being for someone. It begins with the full acceptance of someone as they are, as a belief in and a commitment to the possibility that they are. And then you can say, I stand by you. I am for you. I am an advocate, a champion, a fan of yours. I am for you fulfilling your accountability. You have my full active support for you. The other part of this for me that's so important is to begin to then notice what's between me and being for someone else. What kind of conversations do we generate in a way where we can begin to really take a look at what is that? And how often when you're with teams, do you really have a sense of being for each other? Or is the competition that goes on in your organization so strong that you re remove that natural caring for another human being? So I just wanted to bring this up this morning and thank you very much for uh, all the participation that's here. There's one other slide that I wanted to make sure that you saw. It wasn't this one particularly one, but it's got to do with how conversations, conversations create. So one of the things that I wanted to make sure that you saw why we do a lot of this dialogue. We call it a cafe dialogue or the world cafe because dialogue, a lot of people think it means two people talking. It's really a very, very different quality. It has to do with through the meaning of the word. So when you're there with each other and you are listening, like you're really allowing for what wants to get said to get said, and you are speaking the truth, something begins to happen there where you can create very, very different kind of meaning together. It's another way that I have used, used diverse groups to be able to really see how each other thinks. So again, I want to thank you very much for this. I would love to invite you to take what you've experienced this morning out into the rest of the conference and uh, use the connections that you have here and the quote, being for each other. And then we have some time left to Twitter, too. So I want to make sure that you had to I know I didn't give you as much time as I thought because we had so much to cover. But please Twitter all you want right now to all of your networks around the world. And thank you very much for participating this morning.